Welcome back to another edition of Roof Talk. I'm your host, Derek Maines. Today, I am excited to have a guest that is very well known to me, Sam Bradford, who's actually from my team at the company, The Process Fixer. And Sam works with our clients around culture and around people. And we invited him to be here today on the show because let's just be honest, people are a really valuable asset and resource to us, not just here at Elite, but it's really true as well for all of you there, your companies. So I'd love for Sam to tell you a little bit about his background. If you don't know already, the famous Sam, uh, he comes from Dutch Brothers, which you've all driven past there and seen, seen the lines. And there's some unique reasons as to why and how Dutch Brothers got that way and how they attract and treat their people. And today, we just want to talk about that culture piece. We want to talk about people. We want to talk about the why. And I think this is just going to be a fun episode to, to, to get to know you a little bit more, Sam, and to let the listeners of this show know how they in the roofing industry can build a really strong culture for their teams. Sam, welcome to the show. Thanks. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I, anytime that I get to talk about culture, it's a yeah. good day. I, I just get, this stuff fires me up. It gets me so excited. Um, it makes a, a massive impact, not only on our company, but in our, in the lives of our people. Well, and I think in our customers uh, too, let's be honest, anybody that's driven past the Dutch brothers, uh, you, you know, it's funny cause I think people over 40 don't, don't go as often or ever because they're like, I am not going to wait in that line. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it is a perpetual 24 seven line around the block for people to get Dutch brothers. And it's not just about the product. Cause I've had people tell me, Sam, Oh, I don't like the coffee, but I, yeah. but I still am a big supporter of the company. I'm like, well, that's sort of weird <laughs> you know, to be, to be not a huge fan of the product, but still be a, a huge proponent and a loyal customer. Uh, maybe talk a little bit at first about yeah. what how Dutch Brothers did what they did, and then we can talk about how do we translate some of that here to the roofing industry. Absolutely. Well, Dutch Bros started out in 1992 uh, in Grants Pass, Oregon. Two brothers that founded the company, um, and they were salt of the earth people. They were just people that were they cared about people they loved people and and they started the company themselves like literally with a push cart in in their hometown um but from the start it was always people focused it was always centered around an interaction with a customer an interaction with with each other with coworkers how we treat each other and and that just grew organically and and i i mean i was drawn to the company because of their culture and that's something that I think is beautiful and something that's something that we can like gather and glean from is that when your culture gets to a point, it, it will attract great talent. It will attract people that are interested in working for a company like that. And to think that this little company that started in Grants Pass, Oregon, uh, and, and like literally got to this place where it was literally attracting phenomenal people. Um, how, how can your company do that? How can you get a name for yourself that your company invests in people, believes in people, promotes people, encourages people? That's a company that people want to work for, right? Not a company that discourages their people, that, that just constantly puts them down, has a toxic work environment. Nobody wants to go work there. And so that for me was a, one of the first things that I noticed was like, I'm attracted to companies that have a great reputation, have a great yeah. culture. And I think your your story is interesting too, Sam, because you you left a full time job to 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 take a part time job as a broista just to get inside that setting. Right, you had to take a huge step back in your career to just because yeah. you wanted to be a part of that team. And I think that's just something yeah. so unique about great cultures is that. It's not as much, yes, the money's important. All those things are important. But when people are, are want to come to work for you because of, of who you are, not what you do, that is a pretty powerful thing. And let's just be honest, that translates. Um, we've all been on job sites. And listen, this is the construction industry. So sometimes I tell people, if you've never been on a construction job site, this is not... 
uh, it, you, you know, this isn't a lot of hugging. This is not, you know, this is a lot of screaming at people and telling them, you know, what you think of them. And, and, um, and some of that is in jest. And, and I think, I think people in the industry understand that some of that is toxic. Some of that is the toxic mentalities yeah. and yeah. those crew chiefs. I've seen this happen with the construction companies that I consult for, you know, there are crew chiefs, there are crew leads that nobody wants to work for. And, and all the new guys yep. get assigned there because nobody with ever, any tenure whatsoever will, will deal with that person. And, um, you know, toxic environments aren't good for people to work in. And the reality is this isn't 20 Ooh. years ago where you could just, you know, drive down the street and hire five more people. It's not like that anymore. It's difficult yep. to get people in even harder to retain them. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I've worked lots of construction jobs. I started out early on in construction. I've I've worked for roofing companies. I've I've done these types of things. And I and I can you're right. It's people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And even on these rough and tumble job sites with guys that are hard around the edges, listen, you can still care about your people. You can still care about a person and and show them respect without being huggy and and all this like Plus stuff. It's like you can care about somebody and care about their well being and, and ask them how their day is going. And those types of things matter and they show, they, they cause people to show up differently. Mm -hmm. When I believe that my boss cares about me and he asks me to do something or she asks me to do something, I'm more willing to, to like work with them and, and see it to completion because I, I care about them and I want them to be proud of me. It's there's so much more than just treating people like garbage. And expecting them to show up and do their job just because they get a paycheck, yeah. like you said, that's years ago. That might have worked, but but now they have. Options. It is really true, and I think I do still hear this from leaders sometimes, and they're like, "Well, I'm paying these people to do the work; just do it." And it's like, "Yeah, but that yeah, the world's changed. It's a different place than it was back then." And the reality is, is when we grew up in that, we weren't we weren't happy with that either. Like when when you have to remember no. that, I think as a leader, sometimes it's. Or, or crew chief or, or whatever that is, you got to look back to your younger days and go, would I want to work for me? <laughs> you know? and, and I do sometimes, yeah. I even know here at, at our, at my company and the company that you work with me at, you know, I realize that sometimes I'm not as clear as I need to be on the things that, that I want. And, and, and I look at that and I have to, I have to put myself in the shoes of the people that work here and say, yeah, that's sort of an asshole move. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, and, and, and that's why, you know, it's just important to open up those lines of communication and, and tell people if they're doing a good job, I've had lots of managers say, well, I'm not going to tell somebody they're doing a good job. That's what they're here to do. Yeah. But you don't know how far that goes. Right. We get so few compliments and I, I've even read some stuff about this, especially mm. men, right? We get so few compliments, uh, that one comp guys, we've all had that happen. A beautiful woman compliments you on your shirt or something. You, you, you can hold on to that for two or three years. You're like, you're still flying high. You're like, Hey, you know, I, I'm doing okay here. And I think that same thing happens at work. It's, it's when you get that, that yeah. genuine pat on the back and somebody comes to you and says, you know, I really appreciate mm -hmm. you. And, you know, we couldn't do it without you. Wow. Does that make you feel like you're a part? Yeah. Ken Blanchard said this. He said, for most people, the last standing ovation they received was their high school graduation. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show that like, we do not get enough appreciation at work. And, and I mean, just a simple thing of like, like you said, Hey, I really appreciate your effort today on the job. Like, I know it was tough. No, it was hot out there. And I just appreciate you showing up today. Yeah. Like that just is, it's free. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. It doesn't cost the leader anything to give somebody a compliment. And yet it, it's fuel for that person to show up tomorrow and put out a good effort. And it's fuel for them to like, want to just drive harder for, for the, for the cause. And it's simple and it's yet yeah, sometimes so overlooked and like, ah, I don't need that guy doesn't need to know that he's doing a good job. It's like, why don't you just tell him and see how that goes? Yeah. And I think we've all dealt with this. You get home and, you know, from work and, and your spouse or your partner, you know, the, the first question they ask is, how was your day? And, uh, you yeah. know, it, it's nice to be able to say sometimes, you know what, actually today was a really good day. <laughs> you know, my boss, you know, said yeah. I did a great job yeah. and. And, and just giving, giving that, you know, it's not always about the money. It's not always about all these other things. Sometimes it's just knowing that you're doing good work. And I think especially when you get into the trades, yeah. 
because these are these are hands on jobs, right? These are jobs of working with your hands and and becoming a craftsman and an artisan and, and the skilled tradesman. And it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that motivation, uh, you know, from 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 people that are around you. Um, how does that translate, Sam? Yeah. And you you probably can talk to this from Dutch Brothers. How does that internal culture of of you know, encouraging others. How does that translate over to the customer? Man, I something that we would say a lot is that like our employees are our first customer. If we treat our employees like garbage and then we in turn expect them to treat our, our customers amazing and be so kind and generous to them, like how is that even going to pan out? Like if we can look at our employees as our first customer, they let's treat them the way we want our customers to be treated so that they have the space and the energy and and all these things to work with our with our customers and and it just flows naturally when when you, we treat our employees well they easily in return treat our our customers well and and we give them we show them how we want our our customers to be treated by how we treat them like when they make a mistake, do we berate them? Do we tease them? Do we make fun of them? Or do we go, hey, that didn't come out the way we wanted it to. How do we, how do we try it different in the future? And let me show you how, how I would do this. Those things are so amazing. When we could then flip it around to the customer, when the customer's having a difficult time or frustrated, it gives them so much more space to show up yeah. better uh, instead of that kind of kick the dog syndrome where your manager yells at you and then you come home and you put it out on your wife and your wife gives it to the kid and then the kid kicks the yeah. dog. You know, it's like we just kind of pass that frustration down. Instead, as leaders and, and employers, we can look at it as a way of how do we build our employees up, give them the tools that they need to be successful and support them so that when our customers have a tough interaction or when our customers need something, that they have the ability to be there for and be present. Yeah, I think we forget a lot of times on construction job sites too that that our employees are the front line, right? The the conversation, and let's yeah. just be honest, roofing is a tough industry, especially when it's mm. 117 degrees outside. I mean, this is not a job that anybody wants to be up on the roof, you know, and, and is excited about being there. It, it's a difficult amount of work. You know, there's just, there's just a lot yeah. of, uh, you know, a lot of challenges that go along with it. And uh, you know, I, I see in a neighborhood, the neighborhood that I live in Tempe over the last 10 years, I think every home here has been remodeled uh, pretty significantly. Some of them down to the studs and, you know, some of them rebuilt and they've all had new roofs or new air conditionings. And the reality is, let's just be honest, that work is is loud. It's disruptive. And it's not just disruptive to the homeowner, but the whole neighborhood knows when somebody's getting a new roof. And, 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 if, yeah. and if they're also thinking about getting a new roof, um, that is their impression of your organization, the way that people are being treated on the job site, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, the, uh, the amount of profanity and the volume of the profanity, <laughs> there's just a lot to that. And I think it's important, you know, as people are walking past and, and listen, I mean, there's always the, in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. there's a couple of the older retired guys that have to come out and put their hands behind their back and stand there and watch every little thing that's happening. You know, they're, they're, they're yeah, the voice yeah. for the neighborhood. When somebody comes and says, I, I need to get a new air conditioning and they go, Oh, you know, actually so-and-so was out here the other day. I watched the work. These guys were really friendly and really nice. And they all seemed like they were doing a good job and they really liked working there. And listen, I've heard yeah. it, you know, I've been on construction sites and there's the old guy standing there going, how do you guys like working here? Is this a good company? You know, I get, they're getting into those conversations. So it's about creating those advocates on the ground. And I think we forget many times we're there to do yeah. the job, but we forget that there's 10 other houses in an earshot from us. And, uh, and, and right. the way that we treat our people and the way that our people treat each other is a real reflection in that community mm -hmm. and can be the difference between you getting yeah. five other homes you know, in that neighborhood or not getting any more homes in that neighborhood. I think it applies so much to what we did at Dutch. Um, we had so much fun. And I think part of the customer interaction is just watching us enjoy ourselves. Yeah. And, and it's easy to be like, okay, well, you're in a, you're in a coffee shop, you know, it's air conditioned. Um, it is air conditioned, but when there's 
15 people in that small of a space and you're running all those machines, it's not cold in there at all. It's burning up. I think there's so many times in industries where people will say, well, we can't do this because we're in this industry. And I, 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 when I hear that, I go, yeah, you're right. Uh, and, I, and it reminds me of the Henry Ford quote, um, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And the reality is, is you could say we can't have fun because we're in the roofing industry. Well, with that mentality, you're never going to look for an opportunity to enjoy yourself. You're never going to look for a moment to be like, hey, how do we spice this up a little bit and add some fun and some creativity? There's plenty of coffee shops you can go to that are boring, that are that are just kind of vanilla, you know, if you will. Um, and and Dutch was like, how do we be pistachio? Yeah. Like, how do we be something that's maybe not for everybody, but man, the people that love us, they love us. And I and I just, it's so interesting because so many people come just to experience that, that little bit of fun, that little bit of something different, that little bit of passion and excitement. And they become, another Ken Blanchard book is called Raving Fans. They become those raving fans who tell everybody about us. If you haven't gone to Dutch Bros, you have to go experience their culture. You have to go do this. And it's like, they, they're they those those people in the neighborhood that hear about what we're doing. And, Man, you got to have elite come work with your people. You got to you gotta go work for it. You got to go check these guys out. So it is very true. I mean, the way that you interact becomes like a calling card of, of either these guys are amazing or these guys are awful and I would never yeah. go back. Well, I love um, one, one of the examples here in this industry and many people might be aware of him. I, I've actually chatted with him and we tried to get him as a, as a guest in the show and we just never were able to figure out the time it is in Atlanta, Georgia, a company called Roofs by Don. And he has a completely and totally different approach. I mean, they have a showroom. That is like, it literally looks like it's a nightclub. He has a very popular rap. If you've been to any like events, you know that every single day he usually comes up and performs and it's in, his employees. Like it's his roofers that actually like do the verses in the course. And the, I mean, it's really, and it's a great song and he's had it professionally done. I know he's looking at a TV show right now and he's do, does a lot of media stuff, but it's in that fascinating that you know, he's created, and I mean, yeah. it's really interesting. If you've never checked it out, go to roofsbydon.com. And I think the crazy thing is the gallery, which is where they literally have their shingles where you can go in and pick. It has like museum velvet ropes with like shingles on the wall. It literally looks like it's like a museum and you can go through and like pick, pick them out and like choose your choice. And I'm like, wow. I mean, think about how different that is from the normal experience. Yeah. And this is a guy who yeah. can who can literally, yeah, he has a roofing museum at his place. He, uh, you can actually do tug tests, virtual reality roof inspection tours, all of these things. I mean, it's really crazy to see that, you know, he, he has the the shingles framed like they're like the Mona Lisa, you know, <laughs> with like lights on them and the whole thing, which is such a cool approach because all he's really saying is we're different. We're, we're, we're creating an experience yeah. for people and, um, you know, they they're they're not just building a, a company. They're not just trying to get the next customer. They're they're trying to create a movement, and I really appreciate that that about yeah. Don. And I think he's a really good example of what we can emulate in this industry to make it a little bit more fun, to make it a little bit more uh, about the people. And let's just be honest; that's reflected back to our customers. Let's talk a little bit about the window experience at Dutch because I think it's such an interesting. Mm -hmm. um, time in the Dutch Brothers experience. And for those of you on the East Coast who haven't experienced Dutch Brothers yet, it's coming. Trust me. Uh, I think somebody told me the other day they called it the Starbucks killer. And I'm like, I don't know if it's the Starbucks killer. I think it's a very different thing than Starbucks. But yeah, but the window experience at Dutch Brothers is a really uh, important point of connection with customers. Let's talk a little bit about that. And maybe there's a way that we can translate this into the roofing industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most quick service restaurants that you go to, you're going to roll up to the window and they're going to like have a really brief interaction with you. And then they're going to close the window until they're ready to, to give you what you need, what you came for. Um, and at Dutch Bros, we like looked at it differently. We looked at it as like, here's a moment where we have this really incredible opportunity where our customers waiting. And we can, we can engage with them and we can just talk to them and see how they're doing, what's going on in their life. And man, it, it's crazy 
I could tell you story after story after story of the most life-giving, impactful conversations that we've had, whether at the window or while we were taking their order through text. It's nuts. And, and it's I, I would always talk about it and go, when's the last time you rolled up to a quick service restaurant and had an impactful conversation? Like it doesn't happen. You don't, you don't even expect it. Like you just show up and you're like, here's what I want. Let's move on. But at Dutch, that window experience is magical. And it's something that's so ordinary and so like overlooked that we just saw an opportunity. And I just think that there's so many of these moments in our lives that are so easily overlooked. So just, so just like normal that like, Oh yeah, I'm going to sit at this window and just wait for a little bit. What if, right? What if we engage in a conversation? What if we just ask somebody? And one of the things that was super important for us is, is telling our people, if you ask somebody how they're doing, you'd better want to, you better want to know, like, you don't don't just ask them because that's what you're supposed to do. If you on if you ask how they're doing, you better be open to, to whatever comes out, whatever comes next. And and I think it was so beautiful just to like have these experiences with people that were so connecting. And that's really what makes our our, our place so popular. I mean, people would people would ask, "Hey, are you putting what are you putting in your coffee? Are you yeah. putting drugs in your coffee? Are you putting?" And, and it's like. I, you know, laugh like, yeah, that's not what we're doing. We're just connecting with people and people are so starved for that interaction and so starved to actually just feel seen and heard that it just became a movement. And so, I mean, for, for leaders on a roofing crew, again, looking at your people as the first customer, it's just having those engaged conversations with them. Hey man, how's your day going? What's new? What's something you're excited about in the near future, you know, and just starting to engage with your employees and connect with them and know that as you lead by example, and as you show those that them that you care, that they're going to start to begin to take that on and do it with each other. And, and then when they have opportunities to connect with a customer, that they might use those same tools and we're working with a customer. And it's something that literally over time, there's there are certain companies that would script their people and say, hey, when when somebody says this, we want you to say this. And that's never something that happened to Dutch Bros. We never scripted our people. What we did was we just showed them how to have a good conversation. We showed them by by example, and then we just turned them loose. Mm-hmm. And so it's not about scripting your people, about hey, if someone says A, then you say B. It's literally just having phenomenal conversations with your people and helping them realize like, hey, now you're free to go do this with, with our employees, with our customers, and, and watch just the incredible things. That I love this, Sam. And I think it's such a great lesson for all of us in any business. And that is that sometimes we just need that moment uh, to connect with people. I, I look at the general contractor that we've used for years. I, I consider him a friend now. I mean, I, we, the, this last year, he wanted to go to this really high end sushi restaurant. He's like, I'm going to take all my best friends with me to this high end sushi. It was me and another guy. Like, that was it. Like, he was like, this is it, man. Like, I've been a customer for 10 years. And he's like, yeah, but we always have these great conversations. Yeah. And you always, you know, it's not just asking, you know, what do you need done? But, but what I love about him, his name's Najem. And what I love about Najem is when, when he comes to look at something and I'm like, hey, man, I'm thinking about expanding this. And he doesn't ask what my ideas are. He's like, well, tell me, why do you want to do that? It's like, well, I've been thinking about this and I've yeah. been thinking about this. And he's like, yeah, but, but wait a second. Let me, let me, let's go outside. I want, I want to show you something. And then we stand there for a little bit. And he's like, if you're trying to accomplish this goal, Derek, doesn't this and this get you there too? And many times I got to give him credit. Mm. Many times he's talking me out of work, you know, but he's like, hey, yeah. look, instead of doing this and moving this over here, what if we just added a door on this side? Would, would that, would that get you what you're looking for? And I'm like, yeah, no, maybe it would. And and sometimes listen, I, I agree. And then I text him an hour later and I'm like, no, man, I want to do the whole thing. And he's like, it's cool. I just want to, I want to be helpful <laughs> to you. I want to provide you a service. I'm not just here to sell you something. And I think right. it just goes so far. It really goes so far. And, and candidly, like I won't even contact one of his subs. I need a little bit of electrical work done a couple hundred dollar job. I contacted him. He's like, bro, just call the electrician. I'm like, I don't want to cut you out, man. And he's like, it's fine. 
It's totally good. But we have that kind of relationship. And I think if you have that relationship with your customer, right. particularly, listen, here in the Southwest, we know this is the case. Most people aren't going to live in yeah. one house their whole life. They're going to be in four, five, six, eight houses throughout the course of their life. So, yeah. so you've got an opportunity uh, to, to not only replace somebody's roof once every 30 years, you've got an re- opportunity to replace their roof multiple times throughout their lives. And, and, and you've got an opportunity to put that person to work for you as a salesperson. And that is just something that is very unique. And if you look at these bigger companies, I interviewed, uh, just recently interviewed somebody whose family has been in for a hundred years has been in construction. And a lot of those are repeat customers or they're the children of somebody that they built a custom home for 40 years ago. You know, I mean, that says something about your business when your customers become your salespeople and become your greatest advocates. And to your point, the best way to do that, yep. treat your employees right. Your employees will treat your customers right. Your customers will treat you right. It all flows from that. And it's so beautiful. I mean, it's like when I first started, there was no Dutch Bros commercials. There was no Dutch Bros advertising. All of the money that we were, instead of spending it on advertising, we were focused on just how do we make the customer interaction the best thing that it could be, knowing that our customers are going to go out and be our advocates. They're going to be our brand ambassadors. And I think too many times people focus on advertising too much. They over advertise and then they under deliver. They, they don't show up. They don't, they don't do a good job. They don't make sure the job site's clean. They, they leave the customer with a funny taste in their mouth. It's like, Hey, all those things are going to detract from your advertising because yeah, you might have all these customers that are interested, but you're not continuing that relationship. Like you said, it's, it's when you leave people better than you found them that you find that they're willing to give, to give your name out to other people and, and to be proud that they worked with you. Um, man, that's a, that's a, it's a huge feeling. And then your, then your employees begin to start to feel proud that they work for that company and they get to wear that around like a badge of honor. I mean, I had an experience one time where we were traveling with a group of Dutch bros employees and we're all decked out in Dutch wear. And I remember we were walking through the airport and people were stopping and staring at us. And I felt like we were like a professional sports team. I was like, people were literally like, do you guys work for Dutch bros? And I'm like, yeah, we do. Wow. It became a point yeah. of pride. It became a point of like, I work for this cool company that has this incredible culture and people were excited about that. And that's something that can happen even in the roofing industry. If it can happen for a coffee yeah. shop, then it can happen for anybody. It's, it's really true. And, and just recently we, we have a, a customer in a different space, but I was interviewing some of their employees and I said, what do you like about working here? And they've said very matter of fact, they're like, this is the pinnacle of, a, of your career. Like you, you work everywhere else so that you can come to work here. And I was like, wow, that says something about a company that built a culture where even the employees of your competitors all lay awake at night and say, someday I hope to get a job with them. I mean, wouldn't that help you a lot as a, as a construction company, as a roofing company, if people late, if, if, if workers in your industry laid awake at night and dreamed of coming to work for you, That'd be pretty good. (laughs) So, and that's an investment you can, it doesn't take much because I think to your point, Sam, you know, so many times we don't treat people well. Uh, We don't treat employees well that the person who, who just goes, does anything at all (laughs) is like considered, you know, the best place to work. And uh, so, so the bar's not high. This isn't like you gotta, you you know, you've, you've, you've gotta, you've gotta transform the industry. This is just about, treating people the way you want to be treated and and they in turn treat your customers the way you want them to be treated. And those customers give it back to you over and over and over through their business and through yeah. their referrals. Yeah. Sam, thank you so much for being here and thank everybody for tuning in the roof talk. This is our last of the 10 episodes. We put these out for the 10th anniversary to make sure to provide you with some really great detailed information on how you can help improve your company. Maybe back with more in the future, but for now, this wraps Rooftop. All right, we'll see you soon.